Hey everyone, Wazoo here, and in this episode of our little mini series on creating your own full stack web application with Java Spring Boot, we've previously updated it to Spring Boot 3.0. We've added support for Docker, and we've even gone through a little video on how to track changes and releases using GitHub and tagging. So in this video, we're going to go through the process of adding Flyway database migration support. And even though we've talked about it previously on another video on this channel, I thought it would be a good feature add to add to this project because then it would allow me to update and work on, again, work on enhancements and features to this application that may require database changes. So any future model changes or any such um, objects like that that need to be persisted in the database will likely require changes to the database. And it's much better to track these with a proper migration tool rather than needing to blow away your entire database and restarting from scratch, depending on which version of this project you're pulling down from GitHub. So using a tool like Flyway or Liquibase, which is another popular migration tool for Spring Boot, you're able to properly track and deal with changes to the database throughout the lifetime of your application, along with being able to support different team members contributing different amounts of code, which each have their own changes to database structure and models which need to be tracked. Okay, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and open up our POM XML file. Okay, so we're just going to add the POM dependency for Flyway. So let's go down to the bottom here after the Roam dependencies there, and let's go ahead and inject Flyway. And we're also going to be adding the support for Flyway on my SQL, which is what's needed for working with my MySQL and the Flyway database migration tool. Cool. And then we need to make one little change to our compose.yaml file. We're going to go in here and we are going to actually lock down the version of MySQL that we're using. The MySQL image that we're going to be pulling down, the official Flyway version support depends on the uh, version of MySQL that we're using. So just in case we're pulling down at the time that you pull down a you get this video and pull down a new version of MySQL image, which happens to correlate to an, a version that is not supported by whatever latest Flyway SDK is. So let's lock this down to 8.0. Okay, and then what we need to do is through the magic of our springboot.env dependency that we pulled in, this gives us the ability to describe some environment variables in our .env file which we've got here and pass them right into our application properties file. So let's go ahead and open that up and let's drop that one there. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna do is we are going to enable the Flyway support. So this is done with spring.flyway.enabled. We're gonna set that to true. And then we are going to set up the JPA Hibernate support and our DDL auto, our infamous DDL auto flag, we're gonna just be setting this to update. So only update the database if we see changes in our migration. And we want to show our SQL for now. This will show up in our console and our logging. And then just this open and view false, we really, you can leave this out. It really doesn't matter. It's just every time we start up the Spring Boot server, you might be noticing a console message that says, recommending that open and view be set to false. So we're going to do that now. And then we are going to add our support for my SQL. And we'll do it through these three, through these few settings here. So let's scroll up a bit here. Okay. So first we're setting our spring data source URL, and this is going to be to the localhost port 3306. And we're referencing the MySQL database property variable that we've defined in our .n file, this one right here. And then we're using a driver class name of the JDBC, MySQL JDBC driver, and then specifying a username and password of MySQL user and MySQL password, which again is taken from the .m file. 
And this gives us a way of, again, we are not hard coding any variables or values in the application.properties so that that way when you commit this to version control, you're not committing any secret uh, API keys or anything sensitive in the event that it gets leaked. So during startup, it'll spring boot and the .env dependency package will pick up the fact that you've got a .env file with some variables and then it will inject them into your application.properties file for you. Okay, so everything looks good there. Now, the way that Flyway works, if you recall, is that we need to create a SQL file which contains our initial migration. So in the resources folder of our project, let's create a folder called DB and then another folder called migration. And then we're gonna create a new file and we're just gonna call it capital migration.sql. Now the file name convention of Flyway is very important and it tries to match it up with the version that's stored in the database. And then that way it detects if a migration needs to be run the next time you start up the server. So first we are gonna be creating our post table. Um, up, up until now, we've been doing this, autom we've been using Hibernate to do this automatically. If you recall in code, when we start up the Spring Boot server, uh, you will notice that uh, because we've set our post as an entity, as Spring Boot starts up, it will go through all of the entities in our project and then auto-generate tables for them, which is not necessarily a bad thing. As, we men as I mentioned in, the, in my previous Flyway video, it, it really helps for getting a project up and running. And when you want to make changes, you can easily just play the database, restart the app, and it'll just recreate everything without any issues. But what if you're working on an application two or three years in and you can't do that? You can't blow away the previous, the entire previous database. So we do that with the magic of migrations. So let's go back into the SQL file and let's go ahead and add some SQL here. So we're gonna create a new table. Let's put that in here, right here. So we are gonna create a new table, if not exists, called post. We've defined an ID column as a big int, which is an auto increment. The primary key, our ID column. We've got a title, body, created at, updated at, and account ID, big int, which is our foreign key to our account table. We're gonna create another table to hold our authority model. Okay, so create table if not exists, authority, and then name varchar 16 characters in length, which is also a primary key. Then let's create our account table. Okay, create table if not exists account. Again, we've got our ID column set to a primary key. We've got email, password, first name, last name, and created at and updated at timestamps. And then finally, we've got our account authority join table. So same kind of syntax, create table if not exists, account underscore authority. We've got our account ID, which is a big int, our primary, which is also our primary key. And then we've got the authority name, which is a varchar 16. So we've got this all set up and running. Okay, everything looks good there. Okay, so everything looks properly set up now. We've got our initial migration in our uh, seed data. Remember that we've got our um, data that we're setting in the database. Upon first run, if we don't have any posts, it will automatically generate some data for us. We don't need to touch that at this moment. So what we're gonna do is we can actually run our Compose YAML in the Docker support of IntelliJ. So let's take a look at that quickly right now. So if we right click on the YAML file, the compose YAML file, and then hit run, it will pop open a tab here and start everything up of our for our Docker images. Okay, so we can see the database is reporting as healthy, the database image. 
So that means things are good to go. Our database is already. So let's go ahead up here and switch our selector to the application and let's hit start. And then we will let the application start up. Okay, and we can see here that we've got our, uh, let's see if we can go through it here. So we've, it's picking up our ORM, it's picking up uh, database columns, our database schema set up here. That flyaway is taken care of during startup. And then we've got our SQL here for the inserts of our seed data. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual database. Okay, so let's log in with spring underscore user, remember, and spring underscore password. We're going to port localhost port 8881. And let's log in and we can see here that we've got our, we can see here that we've got our database uh, GUI tool set up. So let's go into spring data. Okay, so if we log into the database, we can see that we have our tables that we created on our init migration, initial migration SQL script. We've got account, account authority, account sequence. We've got post and post sequence. And again, if we go in, we should see our seed data, which we do. We've got our two records there. And let's go back and go into the account. And we've got our two records there. And so remember, notice another table there called Flyway Schema History. And so this is how Flyway determines what version of the uh, migration you're at. And if there's any scripts that it sees in that folder, that DB migrations folder, then it should run them. So right here, we've got our V1 underscore underscore initial migration along with the checksum. So then in the future, if we add additional files to that DB migrations folder with like V2, V3, et cetera, et cetera, then during startup, Flyway will detect that there's new files there. It'll check the checksum of this key in the database, see that there's a difference, and then determine that it needs to process and run those migrations. And then of course, if we go into our localhost 8080, we can verify that everything is coming up correctly. Okay, we've got our blog titles. We can log in with .user at domain.com with a password of password. Okay, and we can make an edit. So let's edit this, update the post. And bam, all right. So that was a entry on adding database migration support to our app. I think this is a cool feature that'll really help us keep the app stable while we develop additional features, enhancements, and functionality for this thing. So that's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for notifications for other videos in this series. And we'll see you in the next one, folks. Peace.